Good morning all. The last portion of Geotechnical Engineering 1 as per the KTU syllabus is the stability of slopes. Slopes, you are all familiar, is nothing but an unsupported inclined surface. Whenever you travel through the road or the railways, you will be familiar with the embankments on which the railways and the highways will be constructed. So they form what we call as a slope or the slope may actually exist naturally as well. When you travel, you can see natural slopes as well. Now, when the, the slope is steeper, the earthwork demanded will be quite less. The steeper the slope, less would be the earthwork demanded. And the problem with the steep slope is that it will be less stable. So to balance the stability and the economy, the steepest slopes which are safe should be provided. So there lies the engineering challenge to provide the steepest slope at the safest and most economical aspect. So slope failures are usually downward and outward movement of soil mass. When you have the slope, you can expect a downward and an outward movement of soil mass by sliding. It occurs when either the shear stress is increased due to the load or the seepage water or when the shear strength of the soil is decreased again due to shaking or pore pressure etc so it's just a balancing act either the shear stress acting on the slope is increased and it may lead to failure or the shear strength of the soil is decreased probably due to the existence of water pressure pore pressure or maybe shaking due to earthquake etc and in that case as well stability of slopes is at risk and you can expect failures the types of slope failures number one is rotational the rotational failure occurs by rotation along a curved surface by downward and outward movement of soil mass and rotation failure itself can be toe failure, slip failure, or base failure, depending on where the failure surface passes through with respect to the geometry of the slope. It can be like this, called the toe failure, or it can be like this, called the slip failure, or it can be like this, called the base failure. So the first one is toe failure, where the failure surface passes through the toe of the slope and the second one is a slip failure where the failure surface passes just above the toe of the slope and the third one is a base failure where the base of the slope is included within the soil mass that's getting eroded so these are the types of rotational failures but anyways the rotational failure happens along a curved surface which can be defined by a curve Second one is a translational failure and unlike rotational failure, the slope of failure surface is con constant of great extent. Parallel to the slope of the earth mass like this, you have the slope like this and the failure surface will have a locus like this which goes parallel to the slope of the earth mass for quite a long extent. That's a translational failure. The third one is a compound failure, a combination of the above two types. And it's usually seen when the hard stratum exists at considerable depth below. Like this, you have a combination of rotational and translational failure, which is called as a compound failure. Next one is a wedge failure. As the name suggests, the failure is along an inclined plane and like a block. It moves or it has a tendency to move like a block and it's also called as a block failure and it's due to the separation of soil along a straight line inclined to the surface, usually due to the presence of cracks or fissures etc. We have different methods to analyze the stability of slopes in which the first one and perhaps the most simplest one is phi equal to zero analysis and this analysis as the name suggests is for pure clay phi equal to zero means that in the equation s equal to c plus sigma tan phi phi is equal to zero or 
The soil is pure clay and the shear strength is totally and exclusively defined by the cohesive strength C. You don't have angle of internal friction, you just have cohesion C. Let's assume a slope ABD as shown in a soil mass that is pure clay. So I have a geometry ABD and the slope is like this and the slope has a length along the curve whose value is L. So let the failure plane be an arc AB of length L with a center at O and radius R. So you have the slope ADB like this and you have the failure curve AB whose length is L and this curve is defined as a part of a circle whose center is O and radius is R. Now, when you think about this mechanism, you'll know that the force which causes failure, a downward and outward movement, is the self-weight of the soil, W, which has a moment at the center. So I can have W, the weight, the self-weight of the soil mass within A, D, B and the curve, and W will be acting in plumb line or purely vertical direction and it passes through the centroid of this particular area. The leverage it has with respect to the center O is given by W multiplied by D where D is a perpendicular distance with respect to the center O. So I have the over turning moment MO equal to W into D. That's a clockwise moment trying to fail this slope ADB with a downward and an outward moment and the force that resists this failure is the unrained cohesion or cohesive strength along the arc length L and the moment of which is given by cohesion unit cohesion C multiplied by R so C multiplied by R will be the unit cohesion at each point and to get the total moment you have the total length here multiplied by C multiplied by R. In short, you will have cohesive strength acting all along this curve AB along the line length L and the cohesive strength whose total value is C multiplied by L acting at a lever arm R will try to resist the failure by an anti-clockwise direction moment. So that is given by MR, the anti-clockwise moment, equal to CLR. C is a unit cohesion, L is the total length of the arc, R is the radius. So you fundamentally have a mechanism wherein W into D is a clockwise moment trying to fail the slope ADB and you have an anti-clockwise moment MR equal to CLR trying to resist the failure. So for the slope to be safe, MR should be fairly greater than MO. The resisting moment should be fairly above MO. And we define the factor of safety of a slope as the ratio of MR to MO. Higher the value of MR, higher will be the factor of safety. So when you have a higher resisting moment, you will have a higher factor of safety and the slope would turn out to be a safe one. So you have CLR by WD as a factor of safety. In actual practice, many such trials are carried out using different geometries of slopes like ADB, ADB dash, ADB double dash, etc, etc. And the combination which gives the least factor of safety is taken as the most vulnerable slope. For example, if you, if you, if you start working out this moment and the factor of safety that you get is 2, what you do is you have a different iteration with a different geometry a d b dash where b is somewhere outside this line so that will have another factor of safety let's say 1.5 and let's take another example b to the left side of this 
and that combination will have another factor of safety let's say 1.1 so among the three factors of safety 2 1.5 and 1.1 the least factor of safety 1.1 corresponds to a particular slope let's say a d b double dash so that will be the most vulnerable slope which is prone to failure and that that slope will be the one that we are interested in to reinforce and to make sure that it remains safe. So that's the concept of slope stability analysis using phi zero analysis.